quite a while ago now, the image viewer I used called SXIV, the Simple X image viewer, went into archive mode. It hadn't had much work done on it basically in the past couple of years, but there were still some developers who were really interested in the project. So rather than letting the project die, instead what they did is made a new one. Or maybe it's better to say they forked the project and that's how we got today's application, NSXIV, the Neo Simplex Image Viewer. And unlike a lot of the times when an application forks, all of the people who wanted to work on SXIV, or at least most of the people, went to that singular fork. And it's not trying to be a rewrite or a redesign of the application. What it wants to be is a drop-in replacement for SXIV while also going down the same sort of path that project was going and fixing a lot of the things that SXIV needed fixing. But just in case you've never seen SXIV before, let's see what it can actually do. Now, having simple in its name might make it seem like the very basic application. There's not really much can actually do. That is so far from the truth, but when you first open the application, it certainly looks simple. Most image viewers out there are just crammed full of buttons, and you don't need that. You're looking at an image viewer because you want to look at the image, not because you want to look at all of this useless interface. So everything in this application is hidden behind key bindings. Some of those key bindings are pretty straightforward. Things like minus to zoom out, plus to zoom in, and equals will go back to 100%. But 100% is not where we actually started. So if the entire image cannot be fit on the screen, at 100% in the size of the window, it will actually go and scale the image for you. If you want to get back to this size though, what you do is press capital W. But if you'd prefer, the option to use the mouse wheel is there as well. Now, once you've zoomed in past the actual size of the image, you might want to actually scroll around to see what's going on in it. So this can be done in a couple of ways. One of those ways is by using the arrow keys. We can also use the Vim keys. They work exactly as you'd expect. Or if you want to use your mouse, holding down the middle mouse button is going to allow you to actually, I guess, pan around the image. Or you can jump directly to the edges by using the capitalized versions of the Vim keys. So capital H, capital L, capital J, and capital K. But all of those individual movements can also be combined with a number. In many cases, this number is going to be repeated action. But when it comes to movement, it gives you much more finer grain control. So if I go and do something like 100H... Rather than moving by that set amount I saw earlier, now it's going to move over by 100 pixels. Keep in mind that interaction method because a lot of the things we'll see later are also going to be using that as well. Now, from the start, I've actually had multiple images loaded up. So if we go and actually pass in a directory, rather than passing in an individual image, it will load that up perfectly fine. But from here, what we can actually do is go into slideshow mode. So you can cycle through the images manually by pressing N to go forward or by pressing space and you can go backwards by pressing P or by pressing backspace. And like with the actions we saw earlier, this can be combined with a number as well. So if I go and press 5N, that will jump us ahead by five images. It won't jump us to image five. So now that I'm on image six, if I go and do the same thing again, now we're on image 11. And you can also jump by 10 images with the left and right square brackets. So the left button will go backwards and the right button will go forwards. And all of that was controlling the slideshow manually. We can also make it go and run automatically. So pressing the S key is going to enable the slideshow. And by default, every five seconds, it'll go to the next image. But if you don't want it to be on five seconds, if you go and combine it with a number, so if we instead stop it and then press 2S, now it'll go and change every two seconds instead. But what if we don't just want to look at a single image at a time? Well, we can also go and enter thumbnail mode. So pressing the enter key or by pressing the right mouse button is going to open up this view of every single image you've opened up inside of the application. If you've recursed through a bunch of directories and you have thousands of images here, it might take a bit of time to load up the first time you open this, but every consecutive time after that, it's going to be perfectly fine. From here, you can navigate by either using the arrow keys, the Vim keys, or by just clicking on an image. And then when you want to open that image up again, you can either double click on it, or you can go and press the enter key. 
There's a bunch of other things you can do with individual images, things like gamma modification, flipping, rotating, all of that fun stuff that you see in most image editors. But I'm not going to go through every single key binding. The man page does have a list of every single default binding. Now, if you ever try to open up a GIF, one thing we notice is by default, it won't play. Now, I have no idea why this is the way it's set up by default. I don't know who would ever want this, who just want to see a single still of a GIF, but this is the way it works out of the box. Not to say that you cannot make them play, it's just all you need to do is include the dash A option to automatically determine the frame rate to actually play at, and then it will play perfectly fine. It should also be noted that when you open up a folder in NSXIV, it will only open up that individual folder. If you want to go and open up the child directories inside of it as well, make sure you go and pass in the dash R option, and then it will recurse through all of those directories. Keep in mind that if you go and open this up in something like your home directory, it's going to take basically forever to run. So be careful when you are doing that, but if it's in something like your images directory or some contained directory, it's always going to be fine. Now you probably guessed this by the name having simple in it and also having a very minimal interface. This is a part of the Suckler style applications. Now, like all of the applications in that sort of family, the way you mainly configure it is done by modifying the C source code directly, modifying the config header file. Now, unlike something such as DWM or ST, where those applications, you basically have to modify them to get a reasonably usable application. NSXIV is actually really, really usable out of the box, and I've actually installed it through my package manager and not made any modifications to it. But here's the thing, C is not a configuration language and you don't have to use it because there are ways built into NSXIV to modify the application from config files. I know, absolutely crazy. So if you want to modify the color scheme, there are variables you can modify inside of your X resources file to actually completely change the look of it. All of that is documented inside of the man page. As for your status bar, you can include a configuration script in your .config directory, inside of the NSXIV directory, inside of exec, and then call it image-info. If you want to modify what the keys actually do, you'd include a script in the same location called key-handler. Now, you're probably really confused about how this script needs to be laid out, what the variables coming into the script actually do, what you actually need to do to get it to actually work. Well, luckily for you, inside of slash user slash share slash doc slash NSXIV, there's actually going to be some example scripts so you can see exactly how they need to be formatted and there's documentation on how it actually works. I don't really know why this is the case, but at least in the case of the status bar, the example script isn't the same as the default script. Usually that's how applications would work but the example status bar is actually better than the default and shows information that otherwise would not have been shown. You've probably already noticed, but both these configuration scripts are just shell scripts. There's no like weird special syntax you need to know. As long as you know how to write shell scripts, you'll basically be good to go. And you already have the template you need, so there's not really much work you actually need to do. But if there are some extra things you do want to configure, at that point, yes, you will need to go and modify the C code directly. And on that note, if you want to go and install some patches, there is a repo called NSXIV Extra, which includes a lot of the patches from SXIV ported over to NSXIV to make them work with the new code base, along with some of the scripts that existed that probably were pretty useful. Things like opening up a URL or having thumbnails for videos and all that fun stuff. So if you're already using SXIV, there's pretty much no harm in migrating. Maybe if you have a really custom build, some of the things would be a pain to move over. But if you've done all that work, doing that work again shouldn't require that much extra effort if you've actually maintained it properly. If you want to go and install it, it's available in the AUR and a bunch of other places. But being a suckler style application... Compiling it yourself is basically like a one-line thing, so it's pretty straightforward. And if you're using a vanilla version of SXIV like I was, there's literally no reason not to migrate over. It's drop-in, 
everything just works and you're good to go. So that's going to be it for me. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Is this an application you would like to use? Were you using SXIV before? Maybe you use one of like, I don't know, the GNOME image viewer or anything like that. I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, Scribes Only Bearer Pay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays. And that's going to be it for me, so I'm out.